Hello, hello, and welcome to another RSS News event. I'm Jay, and you're watching DS Tech Media, mostly about tech, but we cover everything, especially Linux and open source software. And tech privacy woes are at the center of outrage once again. Just recently, I did a video about Microsoft's Windows Copilot AI and the privacy concerns with it recording everything on your screen. This time we have Adobe at the center of the scandal. And if you're unaware, Adobe's probably best known for Photoshop, raster graphics editor, uh, so prevalent that Photoshop is used colloquially as a, a past, past tense participle verb. Like, is that Photoshopped? Or, hey, that's Photoshop. And this is actually about Adobe's terms of service for the Creative Cloud, as well as their Firefly AI and a few other interesting scandals. By the way, you know the drill. It would help me so much if you could like, share this with somebody who might find it interesting, and if you're a real G, subscribe. Apple Insider, Adobe's new terms of service unacceptably gives them access to all your projects for free. In a notice of the updates in the terms of use to users of its creative tools, Adobe says it made some alterations to four sections. It states, Adobe has clarified that we may access your content through both automated and manual methods such as for content review. It has also modified section 5.3, updating how it has the right to delete content for inactive accounts which is the most reasonable change. By closing the window, they cannot continue to use Adobe apps and services. A single blue button is offered to accept and continue, and users are faced with either agreeing to the terms and being able to use the apps they handsomely pay Adobe for, or face being frozen out. Oh, and still pay, unless you cancel your service. Here's the worst, though. Adobe may access, view, or listen to your content through both automated and manual methods but only in limited ways and only as permitted by law. And then they say the wording doesn't completely rule out monitoring of locally stored files used in the applications. It certainly does cover anything that is stored in its cloud infrastructure. And then they get into how this effectively breaks any non-disclosure agreements you may have with clients as a designer, editor, whatever you're doing kind of ties into the the second issue which is adobe offers firefly and other ai based tools to users these have to be trained somehow and then over here at cnet adobe defense changes in its terms of service amid generative ai explosion adobe's reasoning for giving itself the right to comb through user content is the detection and removal of illegal content such as child abuse material or csam as well as abusive content or behavior including spam and phishing and Adobe has since responded. According to the software giant, Adobe performs content analysis only on content processed or stored on Adobe's servers. We don't analyze content processed or stored locally on your device. So the first issue is that Adobe's new terms of service have freaked people out because it says that they can, whether through automation or manually, police the content. And they had to come out and explicitly state that that was just for files stored on Creative Cloud and not on your personal device. And you know, this is more of the dystopian stuff that we've come to expect. This is just like with Windows Copilot. How many times have you clicked the accept and continue on a terms of service? I know I have. Basically signing away privacy and all kinds of other things. That's just kind of the world we live in now. Or is it? doesn't have to be. But the other major problem is the AI aspect. So Mashable, Adobe users are outraged over vague new policies, AI implications. But here's where it gets very interesting. This is creativeblog.com. Artists complain of AI copyright infringement on Adobe stock archives. Several artists observe that the commercially available AI generated imagery appears in Adobe stock search when their name is used as a prompt even though they didn't create the art. And in some cases, the AI art appears to at least partially mimic the style of the artist. This has drawn the ire of several creatives on Twitter this week. Uh, here's a person two months later. This is on Twitter. Adobe is still profiting off the work of artists. Kelly McKernan. And here's this artwork. 
hey Adobe, since Firefly is supposedly ethically created, why are these AI stock images using my name as a prompt in your data set? Loish isn't happy that Adobe is selling fake images using her name. I'm against the use of my art and databases used for generative AI. Loish told Creative Blog, it's copyright infringement in my eyes. And so the plot thickens. I'm probably about 80% done editing this video. And let me tell you, it really is hard to keep up with the news these days because... U.S. sues Photoshop maker Adobe for hiding fees, making it difficult to cancel. This is from two days ago, Reuters. And I can't say for sure that this is tied to the other scandals, but basically the U.S. government's going after Adobe because they make it difficult to cancel subscriptions. They're accused of harming consumers by concealing hefty termination fees in its most popular subscription plan and making it difficult to cancel subscriptions. In a complaint filed by the San Jose, California Federal Court, the FTC said Adobe buries the fees which sometimes reach hundreds of dollars and other important terms in its annual paid monthly subscription plan in the fine print or behind text boxes and hyperlinks. According to complaint, Adobe calculates early termination fees as 50% of the remaining payments when consumers cancel in their first year. I definitely thought that this was worth mentioning. It's just interesting timing. And then last but not least, Ansel Adams Estate calling out Adobe for selling AI generated art using the photographer's name on Art News. If you don't know, um, Ansel Adams is a famous photographer from the 1920s, 30s, famous for black and white photography specifically. In an unusually public configuration, the Ansel Adams Trust hit back at Adobe for selling AI-generated images using famed photographer's name. Adams, a member of the famed group F-Stop 64, is best known for his images of the American West, whose vast forests and mountains he photographed in sleek black and white. On its stock photography website, Adobe Stock, the company was selling pictures produced using generative AI that recalled Adams' work, albeit with noticeable differences. And one picture has since been deleted from Adobe stock. A cloud rolls into a valley cascading above a serene river, seemingly reference to actual works that Adam shot in the 1930s. You know, this is a famous image that Ansel Adams took of Yosemite. I mean, it's a unbelievable photo for black and white. I'll say that much. And Adobe even said thank you for flagging as this goes against our generative AI content policy. In reply, the trust wrote, thanks Adobe, but we've been in touch directly multiple times beginning in August of 2023, assuming you want to be taken seriously regarding your pur purported commitment to ethical, responsible AI. While demonstrating respect for the creative community, we invite you to become proactive about complaints like ours and stop putting the onus on individual artists to continuously police our IP on your platform. And Adobe did not immediately respond to a request for comments. And you're going to see a lot more of this sort of news as AI becomes more of a driving force. It's interesting how when the debate about automation, robots, and AI became a thing. It was like the manual laborers and factory workers who were upset and the white collar creative types, you know, the writers, artists, the web designers sort of mocked them, told them to learn to do something like coding. <clears throat> well, turns out that the first thing that's going to be replaced by AI is going to be content creation and media production. At a time when there's already so many people putting out content, it's going to be impossible to prove that, you know, your work was infringed or that you were stolen from or that this model was trained against your work. But there is another way. You, you don't have to use Adobe or a lot of these things, really. You know, Creative Cloud is like, I think, $60 a month. For me, Photoshop was like a big thing. Like, uh, I can remember being 13 and I was in a band and my guitar player who went to a, he was in a public school and I was in a private school at the time. He brought home this thing he had made on a computer at school and it was a, a logo for our band. It was called Suburban Riot. If I can find it, I'll even put it up here. You know, it was nothing special really, but to me it was like a defining moment in my life because that's how I knew I wanted to learn how to do digital art. And I did. Uh, Adobe's software was a big part of me learning to do art and design and later Illustrator was a big thing. And I always had 
stolen copies of their software because it wasn't a service back then. You actually owned the software. It was on your computer. And I never heard of anybody getting in trouble with Adobe for using their software. And the reason for that is they wanted everyone out there, young people like me, learning their software and making it this de facto standard because there was competing software at the time. There was Corel and other things. So for a free and open source replacement for Photoshop, there is GIMP. GIMP stands for the GNU Image Manipulation Program and it was my first foray into open source software. I was using it on Windows because I did not have a copy of Photoshop at the time. This was after they had gone to the Creative Cloud model and I was pleasantly surprised by how capable it was. Of course there is a learning curve to it and Understandably, some people who are used to Photoshop are probably not going to love it right away. I do believe that there's some ways to make it look and function more like Photoshop. Another possible replacement is Krita. Krita is a very powerful paint and design program. And of course, nestled into its tools are lots of other things that are more Photoshop-like. It has very powerful brushes and I like the right click menu. As a replacement for Illustrator, I would definitely recommend Inkscape. Inkscape is basically my main design program. I spend the most time in Inkscape. It's a scalable vector graphics program. It's very good. Inkscape was used to make most of the visuals in this very video. Uh, all the news graphics, whatnot, all that was done using Inkscape. Um, you know, I've, and it is well known as a very powerful program. In my opinion, it is the best open source vector graphics program. It's a great alternative to Illustrator. As a replacement for Adobe Lightroom, there is Darktable. Darktable is very robust. It lets you work with raw photography as well as in JPEGs. It's a non destructive photo processing and it has all the tools that you might expect. All of these are available for Mac OS, Windows, and of course Linux. That's one of the beautiful things about open source projects is everybody benefits from them. And I could do a video about GIMP, Inkscape, and Darktable. So let me know if you'd like to see a video dedicated to replacing Adobe products with open source. Of course, you know, not everyone is going to use these things and think that they're equal to Photoshop. I mean, Photoshop is made by Adobe, you know, billion dollar corporation, well funded. These are open source projects and they're funded by grants, donations, users like me, users like you. If you value your privacy and, and your rights to your work, you know, maybe consider looking into these uh, softwares. Anyways, let me know what you think about all this in the comments section down below. I appreciate you for taking the time to watch. And what do you think of me doing these news videos? The last one didn't really do that well, but everyone was covering the Windows Copilot recall stuff. So should I keep doing the news stuff or should I abandon this and just stick to whatever else I was doing? Anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.